spirit moved by my spirit said the lord so that's for my faith let me continue by paying homage to my elders who ha who envisioned and birthed the progressive people's party and have nurtured it as the third force in Ghana's political space and as the only capable alternative to the NDC and the NPP Dopoli, who represent the mountains that must be removed for the new Ghana to be established. I pay tribute to the founding father, Dr. Papa Kwesi Indum, and his spouse, Mrs. Indum, Mr. Mike Egan Sr., Chairman Ladi Nylander, Chairman Ni Alote Bru Hammond, Mrs. Mary Ankuma Bwachi Bwating, Madam Ivaloko of Blessed Memory, who have graciously mentored me in the art and science of leadership for nation building ahead of this great generational assignment. Our newly elected executives from the national, regional, constituency to the polling stations, and indeed our entire membership and support base, I thank and acknowledge your dedication and sacrifices to take the PPP from the third force to first. But for COVID-19, you would have been here in your numbers. I am nevertheless grateful that you are with the few of us gathered here in spirit and in your millions out there participating and observing this historic event online. Ladies and gentlemen, with this announcement, you can expect many to ask, can this PPP man win the 2020 elections and become the president of the Republic of Ghana? Yes, I can. Can the voters make me the president, knowing that we do not even have one seat in parliament now? Yes, they can, if they want to. Why? Because in Ghana, we run an executive system of government where one person is given the authority to form a government using the best men and women he or she can find inside and outside parliament. We do not run a parliamentary system where a party needs a majority in the legislature to form a government. What our experience in the Fourth Republic has taught us is that we need a president who is best suited for the job with a great vision and capacity to make it a reality. On that score, ladies and gentlemen, I believe I am the person most suited for the position of President of the Republic of Ghana come January 2021. And there are many good reasons why Ghanaians should support me in 2020 to make the new Ghana a reality. We need a new Ghana for a clean and surgical break from the past and the current toxic politics of the duopoly that has dominated and retarded our development and progress since the establishment of the Fourth Repub Republican Dispensation in 1992-93. I have come to this point not only by faith, but with a lot of work, as the good Lord has given me strength. As some of you are aware, my exploratory work into leadership and nation building started way back in 2007, while working with the National African Peer Review Mechanism Governing Council as head of communications evangelizing good and accountable governance from the national to local government levels, where I first received the clarion call for change in our governance system. Indeed, there is evidence around that majority of Ghanaians, more than ever before, are tired and fed up with the bad governance of the duopoly, ranging from election violence to corruption and bad economic governance, aptly described by a judge of the Superior Court of Ghana at a commission of inquiry as create, loot, and share. 
while majority of our people wallow in poverty, destitution, and neglect. My announcement today is in response to the call and the continuation of the journey we started in 2008. This journey must end in the Flagstaff House, where we shall execute our agenda to make Ghana a just, disciplined, and high-income country. The new Ghana is possible. Ladies and gentlemen, before 2012, there was nothing like the Progressive People's Party. When we came on the scene, many predicted that we would fade away like the numerous new parties that had come and gone. But we beat everybody else apart from the duopoly to take the enviable position of third force in the 2012 and 2016 general elections from where we are determined to leapfrog to the first position in the 2020 elections. To that end, I am inviting each and every one of us in the PPP and the progressive movement, movement of Ghana as a whole to come and together step into the big shoes of our beloved Dr. Papa Kwesi Indum to show strength, not only at the presidential level, but also at the parliamentary level in constituencies all over the country towards the progressive movement from third force to first in Ghana politics. As I speak, our strong parliamentary candidates have already begun to prepare themselves for victory in all 16 regions and 275 constituencies. The incumbent MPs who have failed their constituents know who they are and should be preparing to hand over to PPP MPs just as the president must prepare to hand over to William Dooko on January 7, 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, who is William Dooko? I am an ordinary Ghanaian boy born in Accra New Town, precisely at the Dr. Inkansa Jan's maternity home on the 6th of March, 1971, to ordinary Ghanaian parents who are now on retirement. Through hard work and dedication to service, formal education, apprenticeship to great and capable nation builders, and above all, the infinite great grace and favor of God who has called me, I stand in front of you to speak about seeking the mandate of the people to become president of the Republic of Ghana to help build the new Ghana that we all want. I live by family values, and I'm married with three young children that I would love to live in the new Ghana that I want to help us build together. I'm a Christian, a fundamental Baptist, who has accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and is not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, while tolerant and accommodating of the beliefs of others. My political ideology is pragmatism, humanism, and common sense. Informed by the need for consensus building, inclusiveness, and using the best people in the country to accelerate our development and make our people collectively prosperous. I believe in working with a sense of agency to solve the problems we have today and not leave them for tomorrow. I also believe that a lot can be done for our country if we all share and work towards the attainment of the new Ghana vision of a just and disciplined high-income country within one generation. 
ladies and gentlemen, for close to 30 years, long enough to transform any resourceful nation from developing to developed, third world to first, or poor to rich, like South Korea, Singapore, and others which attained independence about the same time as Ghana, and with similar economic indicators have done, we have missed the economic transformation component of our democracy because the basic law that governs it, the 1992 Constitution, is not fit for purpose. As the star of Africa, first nation state south of the Sahara to attain independence and mentoring others to achieve same, the African continent still looks up to us and it is time for a new generation of leaders to rise again to lift us up to the new Ghana where we belong and the Africa that we want. Unfortunately, it appears our leaders in the fourth Rep Republican dispensation are stuck in the 20th century ways of doing things, seeking non-existent solutions for 21st century problems. It does not work like that. And that explains why Ghana, the star of Africa, sadly remain underdeveloped. Thankfully, the PPP and I have 21st century solutions for our 21st century problems. And for us to experience the new Ghana in our lifetime, we must not only replace the current, we must not only replace the current president and prevent the former president from coming back into power. We must, in addition, undertake sweeping reforms to pave way for good and accountable governance in the new Ghana. Ladies and gentlemen, there are 10 policy visions that I would execute with a sense of agency for the new Ghana, for the new Ghanaian and the new Ghana we need beginning January 2021. First is to create a just and disciplined society. In the new Ghana, we shall create a just and disciplined society with a passion for excellence within 10 years and with science and technology as the cornerstone become a high income country within one generation. Two, I shall work to improve the performance of government, restore credibility and competence in state institutions, make government efficient, and raise the needed revenue to be able to pay public servants well, to motivate them to facilitate the work of the private sector and Ghanaian society in general. In my administration, the capable public sector will be the engine of growth that drives every other sector to success. Three, I work to give power to the people for development. I shall sponsor and indeed pilot through parliament amendment of the 1992 constitution to enable the election of all district assembly members as well as the metropolitan municipal and district chief executives to ensure local accountability and rapid development. And I shall do this within one term of office. For policy, I shall strengthen parliament to perform its legislative duties effectively. Again, I shall sponsor amendment of the constitution to abolish the provision that allows members of state that allows ministers of state to also serve as members of parliament. I believe that this move will make available for governance a large pool of qualified, experienced Ghanaian talent whose expertise is currently unused and therefore lost to Ghana. This I shall complete in one term of office. Concurrent with this objective would be a solid determination 
to give Parliament the facilities and resources needed to pass good laws and scrutinize proposals submitted by the executive effectively. In the new Ghana, in the new Ghana, what you observed in Parliament last Friday shall never happen. And I repeat, in the new Ghana, what you and I observed in Parliament last Friday shall never happen. Collateralizing our gold reserves for 500 million US dollars because the incumbent wants cash to spend and win the 2020 elections flies in the face of good economic management and good accountable governance. In the new Ghana, that will never happen. The Ejapa Agreement shall be revoked. The Ejapa Agreement shall be revoked in my administration for lack of transparency in the national interest and possible fraud. I repeat, the Ejapa Agreement shall be revoked in my administration for lack of transparency in the national interest and for possible fraud. Those are the reasons why they shall be revoked when there is regime change. How can we so quickly forget about PDS and so soon create another one for looting and sharing? That will not happen in the new Ghana. Faith policy, we shall provide quality education for every Ghanaian child. My administration shall standardize school facilities from kindergarten to senior high with libraries, toilet facilities, classrooms, kitchen, housing for teachers, playgrounds, etc., and ensure free, compulsory, continuous education in public schools from kindergarten to senior high, including computer training. An integral part of this objective is to significantly increase vocational training so that all school leavers can gain employable skills. The compulsory part of this policy will be enforced by the education police that we shall establish once the PPP comes to power. Policy six, energy for industrialization. My administration shall execute solutions with a sense of agency to meet the energy needs of industry and domestic use and make Ghana a net exporter of power again in four years. To achieve this objective, we will provide tax incentives to enable development of alternative sources of fuel and power, such as biofuels and solar. We aim to ensure that the contribution from alternative sources of energy reaches a minimum of 10% of what we need within one decade. Policy seven, better health care and a cleaner environment. My administration shall guarantee a cleaner environment from preventable diseases like malaria, cholera, and guinea worm. We shall provide affordable and accessible health care for all in every corner of the new Ghana and ensure emergency care throughout the country to save lives. Our focus shall be in the area of prevention where education is key. The current hand washing culture shall be strengthened whether we have COVID or no COVID. We shall strengthen that. Policy eight. In the new Ghana, we shall collectively attack crime, the drug trade, political violence, negative political vigilantism, 
and corruption aggressively while showing leadership by example, being modest in government, enforcing the right to information law, and ensuring an independent prosecutor's office exists and is separate from the Ministry of Justice. We shall strengthen the Narcotics Control Board to make it the agency responsible for fighting the drug trade with all the human, financial, and other resources needed for success. The police service shall no longer be under the control of any politician. And I repeat, the police service of Ghana shall no longer be under the control of any politician. Tenure of office of the IGP shall be guaranteed for a fixed term, and he or she shall no longer be appointed by the President of the Republic of Ghana. The service shall, of course, be provided with the resources, training, and motivation needed to fight crime without fear or favor. And lead, needless to say, if the police was in this shape, I'm sure that the violence we witness related to politics and electioneering campaign in this country will not be the case. The police will be bold and they will attack political vigilant vigilantism without fear or favor. Policy nine. Our brothers and sisters in the diaspora contribute a great deal to our economy in terms of remittance. But I know they can and are willing to do more with their knowledge, skills, and experience. To that end, my administration shall create a homecoming secretariat to cater for the needs of Ghanaians abroad and the diaspora by June 30th, 2021. The Secretariat shall provide the support system to encourage re-entry, investment, safe and healthy vacations, and transfer of knowledge and technology for the speedy attainment of the new Ghana. And finally, the 10 policies, which is about the most critical and the most important apart from the reforms of, of the governance system. Jobs. Jobs, jobs, jobs for every Ghanaian. Sustainable jobs will be key to creating and sustaining the new Ghana. My administration shall use the state's purchasing power to ensure that we eat what we grow and use what we produce in Ghana. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the first step to sustainable jobs creation. If you check anywhere there's been development and progress in the world, they've used the state's purchasing power to trigger employment, and they have made progress. Uh, it is not rocket science. We are able to do that. Ghana's business climate shall be improved with the new Ghana Public Service reform to facilitate both public and private sector job creation so that our people will stay at home to help develop the country and its economy. We will be relentless in providing support to Ghanaian industry and our farmers and fishermen using low interest loans, technical assistance, tax incentives, and priority access to Ghanaian markets. To accelerate job creation nationally, an inter-region highway will be built with the same high quality throughout the country to open it up for investment and development as we take full advantage of the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement Project, whose secretariat we proudly host in our nation's capital, Accra. Ladies and gentlemen, should the people of Ghana vote for me to become president, I pledge to do what no president in the Fourth Republic has been able to do. Apart from the prioritized constitutional reforms 
which we shall undertake with a sense of agency, I shall complete all projects initiated by my predecessors before starting new ones, utilize the loans contracted by my predecessors, and of course, cancel the bad ones before considering any new ones, and report to Parliament every year progress towards implementing the directive principles of state policy enshrined in Chapter 6 of the 1992 Constitution. Ladies and gentlemen, when we're in normal times, we, all we needed to do was to grow our economy at double digit for 10 consecutive years to have the chance to attain economic independence. Successive administrations failed to meet the target despite our bountiful natural resources. Now that things have become more uncertain following the COVID-19 pandemic, many Ghanaians have doubts about our ability to catch up post-COVID-19 to attain the dream of a high-income country. We must necessarily move away from winner-takes-all politics to an all-inclusive government of the people, for the people, by the people. I am for a government of national unity, and God willing, that is what I shall deliver when I become president of the Republic of Ghana. In my government and in the new Ghana, you would find not more than 60 ministers of state made up of the best people from the PPP, the CPP, the PNC, the NDC, the NPP, independents, and technocrats. Now, ladies and gentlemen, 60 because we have created new regions. When the PPP was established in 2012, our target was to have just 40 ministers. But we are compelled by the new arrangement of 16 regions because we must necessarily appoint regional ministers. And of course, there will be no deputy regional ministers. So we are going to have a maximum of 60 ministers of state and help the technocrats to deliver on the development that we need. We are not going to toy with the state's resources with 120 something ministers of state. That is absolutely unnecessary. Ladies and gentlemen, this, in summary, is the message of my campaign and the purpose of my presidency. To succeed on this journey, I'll need your prayers and support. And in conclusion, I want to thank all media houses represented here, and in particular, those of you who have chosen to carry our message live directly to, the, to Ghanaians throughout the country and abroad. We need you. Together, we'll make democracy work for the benefit of our people. The new Ghana is possible. PPP, awake. Hashtag William Dorpo for President 2020 Awake. God bless you and thank you very much for coming. Thank you.